Skyspace is an absolute beast of an academic AI tool and this is how you use it. So when you log in, it looks like this. Now, the first thing I recommend you do is go in to look at pricing and also how much you need to pay because they are a little bit sneaky in the way that you need to kind of like uh, use credit. So you can use it for free and you get 100 credits per month, but you'll see that you actually uh, sort of get through those so very, very quickly. I've paid for this one, which is premium, which is 1,200 credits per month, and then it goes up and up. I mean, monthly, it costs $90 per month, $20 per month. Like, no student is going to pay $90 a month. Anyway, I recommend you give it a go with $20 a month just to start with. But the one thing you'll notice is... Um, they really choose up the credits. Now, credits are a sneaky way of getting you to use um, the services and then pay more money as you're going. It's kind of like the stripper dollars of the AI academic world. Um, you can see here that, you know, just to do one image extraction from file, which we'll talk about how I did that, um, it used 146 credits. So you do a handful of things and you're already halfway through your bloody um, credit usage for the month, even on a pay tier. So I'm not a big big fan of this. I'd rather a subscription and then like unlimited usage, but hey, it is a very cool tool and you'll see all of the things you can do. Okay, so this is the layout at the moment and in the sidebar is everything you can actually do. So you've got home, which takes you to this page, which is full of awesome stuff. We'll go through that in a minute and then all the way down to AI detector, extract data, citation generator and everything in between. You also down the bottom here get your recent chat. So these are all of the things Things you've done recently. The one thing I don't like about it is once it drops off the end of this recent chat, it just disappears. So if you need something and you want something, you do have to save it. Otherwise, it will just disappear. And I've never worked out how you can actually sort of like find the older ones. There's no history. Ah, <sighs> anyway. So the first thing I recommend you do once you're in here, after you've looked at the pricing to make sure it suits your pricing, is go to library because this is really the heart of how you start making it yours. So I recommend you import everything from Zotero. You can sign in using Zotero and then you click, click here to see which ones you actually want to import into this uh, library. Now, this library is huge. It's full of everything you would ever want to do with your academic papers. So here, all files you can see here. Let's close that so we've got a little bit more space. You can see down here we have all of the papers in each individual row and like other tools, you get a little too long didn't read summary which is great if you want to have a little bit of a uh, sort of understanding of the paper without having to read the full thing and then you can add columns so limitations this is the limitation of this stuff and then as you can see if we scroll along how do I get there? We are. Look, this is annoying because to move along, you have to go all the way down to the bottom and then all the way to the top. I'd love not to have to do that. So uh, size space. Anyway, so you can add a column, create a new column and you've got all here. And also you can add your own um, sort of like column. Uh, anyway, so columns added by you, you know, best position. That was with my uh, sex papers. <laughs> That was ages ago. Anyway, I was looking to try to find the best sex position and I added a column. That's so funny. Anyway, um, look, and also up here, you can see you can change your language and also chat with this entire library. So this is one thing that is super powerful because you can select this entire library and then say, hey, I want to chat with it. So you can ask any questions of your entire database, which is why you want to get all of your stuff into this as quickly as possible. And uh, then what else have we got? Open a new notebook. A notebook really is just like a little um, Word document that you can save notes, work on files. We'll talk about how to do that in a minute because it is uh, quite powerful actually, but a little bit confusing. And then also you can export all of your files. So you can see that in your library, this is where all of the stuff you care about can live and you can can work with it and then under each individual paper you can get a summary by clicking here and then it will generate an AI summary of that paper which means you don't need to scan the paper anymore look how quick that was I really like that um, and then also you get a podcast you can play it as a podcast like our notebook LM equivalent and then you get chat with this paper so if you want to talk specifically with that paper and no other paper you can chat with it here which is really great if you're thinking oh actually this was the paper that I think said this and you can go in and be like, did you say this? And it'll actually tell you. So that's pretty good, isn't it? And then also look down here, we can rename, move and delete uh, files. So that is everything you can do 
and it is very, very, very powerful. And uh, yeah, it's uh, probably one of the best places you can store and work with academic files at the moment. My understanding at the moment is it doesn't cost credits to actually do this stuff. It's only when you're using your AI agent, you know, the really computational heavy stuff. But ultimately, that's where we're at with the library. And then once your library is set up and you've got all of your files in there from Zotero, then this is where the magic can really happen. So check out this next thing, Agent Gallery. So if you click on Agent Gallery, it will take you to this and there are 556 agents and agents really are the future of academic AI tools because it's not just question response, question response like it is with a chatbot. Now these agents do things for you and can spin out multiple AIs to work together to give you an awesome result. So for example, using an AI agent, I actually created a website of all of the African paleontological, uh, paleontological, paleontological, yes, sites. And uh, it created an interesting interactive map for me with a single prompt. This would have taken hours and hours in the past. Now you can use AI agents to make it super, super easy. So agents are the future. Let's go back to the agent gallery. Where are you? Here it is. No, 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 not there. Oh my God, I've lost my thing. Agent gallery. Let's just click there. That's easy. And now you can search a load of agents. So if you're working on your literature review, so you can say literature, there we are, AI literature review. Let's have a look. AI literature review generator. You can click here, then it tells you what the AI agent does. So I highly recommend that if there is an agent that you think may exist, head over to SciSpace because it almost certainly will. There are so many awesome ones and very niche and specific ones as well. So um, this is what it outputs. And uh, yeah, ultimately, it is a really great place to sort of start your academic uh, AI journey because a lot of the hard work's done for you and you can get a load of outputs. Look how many there are and they're adding to them all the time, real time sensor data analysis, real world evidence synthesis, regulatory document and um, assistant, reproducible bioinformatics reporting. I don't even know what half this stuff is, but I'm sure it's very, very powerful. And you can see down here the SciSpace gallery if you want to extract and analyze data, if you want to work on a literature review, if you want to create and write. So this is the sort of things I think that I would want to do early on. So I want to create and write stuff. So latex proofing agent, we like that. Essay outline generator plan, oh, we like that, especially for under graduates. Look, it, it will sort of like give you an outline generator for you. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Anyway, so that is the AI agent thing, which is in this bit here. So the agent gallery, we could spend a whole video just going through that, but we won't because there's so much more to do. The next thing is the AI writer and I'm pretty pleased with it, I think. All right, using AI for academic writing is a little bit of a gray area. Is it your own work? Is it AI? Well, you need to work with AI to make it your work. Do you know what I mean? So here you can see this is the AI writer tool and content generator, but uh, you can just start writing, which I really don't recommend because we've got some awesome AI things that you can actually do. So choose a template. And I think this is where the real power for people that don't like writing lies. If you can choose a template, so five found if you've got a research proposal, literature review, abstract writing, thesis statement, essay writing, all of these things can be used. And so let's just click on literature review, for example. And so start writing here. Um, and you'll see that you get a little bit of a prompt. What are you writing a literature review? Literature review on beards. There we are, generate. And then what it will do is it will create the headings for you. I hate having a blank page and having to work with uh, sort of like uh, from zero, I guess, but this will allow you to get at least a structure that you can agree with and then you can start sort of like creating the content with AI. So this tool, just like Jenny and Yomu, will actually create citations as you go. You can see here, introduction of beards. It's got this little grayed out thing. Beards have long been emblematic of masculinity, authority. Oh, I'm liking this already. Anyway, so we can click there and then as you just sort of like wait, it will generate the next little thing and then you can say, okay, yeah, I do or don't want that. In contemporary society, the resurgence of beards reflects the gending. Yeah, okay, why not? Let's just put that there. It will go on and on and on. And if we want to cite something, we can cite from either 
the um, sort of like the stuff it found or my library or SciSpace papers or stuff created by me. So ultimately, this is where you can cite and write all in one place. And you've got all the typical things you can do up here. Um, the uh, bolding, italic, you know, bulleted list, numbered list, all of that stuff you can do up here, just like Google Docs, for example. But you can also ask AI questions down here. Um, and you can see, look, draft with AI, continue writing, outline builder, write the introduction, write the conclusion. So ultimately, this is something that will allow you to uh, put a lot of words onto paper and then you have to work with it and make it your own. And the one thing I like about this is you can export it fully as a doc file. So if we open up this, um, it does allow you to work with it outside of SciSpace. And that's what I really like because I hate it when they trap you in their ecosystem. And there we are. Is it great? No you know, because it's just what I generated, but it is completely editable. And uh, I would like to see this be extended into something like LaTeX because then you can sort of genuinely have full control over this. Um, but for DocX at the moment, it's absolutely fine. Obviously, then you can put it into whatever word processing uh, tool you want to use, which is great. So that is the AI writer. And I highly recommend you start with templates because that is really where the power lies. And look, as you can see check usage of all of my credits i bought it today and i've already used um uh, uh how many i don't know it doesn't say but i've already uh, i've only got 83 percent left so i've only got 995 left and i haven't really done much so you can see it starts chewing through that usage but let's carry on because we've got other stuff chat with pdf literature review fine topics and so much more oh Chat with PDF is a really awesome tool. So you can put in a um, PDF or you can try a sample PDF. Let's try their sample one. Then you have to put it into a collection. Um, let's just say I'll put it into Andy Research. We'll upload it there. And then you can actually start chatting with the PDF. You've got a PDF on this side and then you've got the chat um, sort of interface on the other side. It is a pretty um, useful kind of tool because you can turn it into a podcast. You can get an AI summary like we saw in the table view or in my library. But this is just a way where you have the paper on one side and then you have the chat. The one thing I like about this is you'll notice you can actually highlight things. So select a statement in the PDF to use um, in the chat. So you, all you have to do, you can see it's automatically sort of selecting paragraphs, which I quite like actually, because dragging and dropping is fine, but you know, you can just sort of like hover over an entire uh, paragraph. So explain text, summarize, get related, paper, highlight, save to literature review on beards. Um, and that's really great, isn't it? Because we've just started that literature review and now we can save it to literature review on beards in that notebook. Yes, I love that. That's a nice way of kind of combining these tools. Anyway, you can also explain math and table. So if there is a math or a table somewhere, uh, does this one have it? Here we are, maybe this one. So I can click that Let's highlight those things. Yes, I want that. Let's highlight. Oh, yeah. Explain math and table. Oh, there we are. Uh, go. Ah, there we are. Hover over it. That's how that works. There we are. So explain the text. I absolutely love this. It grabbed it automatically and you can see it's searching for citations and now it's going to explain that table to me. Absolutely love that. So I'll turn that off. How do I turn that off? Stop it. Stop it. I want to get away. There we are. Okay, here we are. Comparison of layer types. So the one thing is that's really great is sometimes you see in a peer-reviewed paper a table that just doesn't make sense to you. But now you all you have to do is highlight it and you can get a full, proper, in-depth kind of explanation of that table that you had no idea about. So here you can see the main idea, detailed explanation, and you get so much information. Well done, SciSpace. I think this is one of the best um, chat with PDF tools I've seen available for academics at the moment. And also you can turn this into a podcast. I'm not a huge uh, sort of um, fan of these podcasts, but if you're commuting, if you're doing stuff in the lab, why not just sort of like turn this into a podcast so you can listen to something as you're waiting for something in the lab for example, I did that all the time with music. Now I could have done it with um, papers. So maybe not as, as entertaining as a podcast, uh, but never mind. You can do that. Do it if you want or not. No worries. Just whatever. Yeah. Stay cool. <laughs>
All right, let's go through these quickly because they're kind of smaller tools and they allow you to do a load of different things. So chat with PDF we've done, and then we've got literature review. So you can click on here and it says create a literature review. So I've done that in the past and it's really done well with the literature review. It doesn't produce a literature review document. In my experience, it just produces the literature that then you can work with. So it's more like find the literature rather than, than a long literature review that you would hand in. You can also do find topics. So if you want efficient materials for solar panels, renewable energy trends, you can find topics, so go deeper within research papers to extract insightful topics. Something really good if you're looking for a research question. Then we get paraphraser. The paraphraser allows you to put sample text in, you paraphrase it, and then you can get a more academic version over here. So that will be working. There we are. This is how you can um, yeah, rephrase and paraphrase things easily, which is really great. Sometimes it's really hard to work out how you could paraphrase something, but here here, it gives you an example. I wouldn't copy and paste this across, but you can use it to inform your own paraphrasing. And then we've got AI detection down the bottom as well. The text is mostly AI, yeah, because it was generated by AI. Great, that works. And then we've got citation generator. Um, if you have got something like a URL or a book or something that you want a title for, then you can cite it and then it will format the citation and then you can copy and paste that across to your work, which is really great. And you you can see that SciSpace has all of these little tiny tools that are actually really useful and they're really sort of like easily uh, available on the side here. And my understanding is these ones don't use up your credit, so you can use this as much as you want because it's not part of the um, AI assistant. But here's the thing is we haven't even got into the main crux of it, which is this sort of like thing here, which is the AI assistant. So now the landing page if you want to just sort of start broad, if you want to start a research um, uh, sort of like question um, understanding, if you want to generate stuff, you can do it all here. And the sorts of things you can do on this front page is all of this stuff, which is just crazy. You've got literature review, write a draft, generate a diagram, search papers, extract data, pretty much any academic task you want to do, you can do straight here. And all you have to do is let's just say convert a file, click there, convert this file to blah, and then you can upload a file, which is great. You've also got deep search and something that they've been really pushing recently, which is biomedical, specialized agent for complex biology and medicine tasks. So that's not really my field, so I wouldn't be able to review that properly. But if you are in the biomedical field, this is probably one of the only tools at the moment that has a specific AI agent for you. And look, all the way down here, we have so much more. So you can work with all of these sort of files and also you can make things, outputs. And this is what I did. I created that website like I showed you earlier, but there's so many other things that you can do. One thing I like about this is that, you know, I use this extract image thing and the extracting image uh, you know, extract images from file is something that's a little bit annoying to do if you've got a lot of images in a file and you want to use them in a presentation. But this is what it did. So it generated the files for me. You can click up, up here on outputs and that'll actually give you the files you can work with. Um, I had issues with this extracted files. It never really worked, but I was able to actually get them downloaded onto my computer. Um, and I don't know where they've gone, but they were there somewhere. So you can actually just sort of like download all files and it allows you to get the files in here. Like I said, I wasn't able to do it through their interface, but downloading it seemed to work, which is great. There we are. So this was all the extracted images. We like that. So we, that's, the, that's the header. Uh, this is another one which doesn't work. And then what else have we got? There we are. Here's an image that came from that paper. So love it. Super easy. You get a file with all of the images. And uh, that actually did use some credits because it was agent based. But uh, yeah. That is something that was quite annoying to do in the past, but now you can do it with um, size space, which is great. So there are so many things you can do. Like I said, it would take hours and hours to go through this, but click through and see if there are some things that you want. You can also generate any of these things. So you can use any prompt here to say, create a literature review, write a draft, generate a diagram, use Google Scholar to blah, use my Python library, find grants, write a report, just so many academic tasks. And then down the bottom here as well, you've got popular tasks used by researchers. So if there is something, uh, you know, that's academic that you want to do that you want AI help with, SciSpace almost certainly has something for you. 
Oh, all right then, try it yourself and let me know in the comments what you think. If you want to know more about SciSpace, go check out this video where I talk about using SciSpace and the deep review function for different academic tasks. I think you'll love it.